Good morning, everyone. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Epic Fantasy Romance. I'm here with my first cup of coffee. Hmm. Clearly all discombobulated. Today is Monday, um, June 20th, 6 20, 2022. And uh, I'm back. Yay. And look, if you're on video, you can see that I have this gorgeous, I feel like QVC, this beautiful mug suitable for all occasions. Um, hand painted with beautiful flowers. This was a gift from lovely and amazing steadfast podcast listener Megan Sienna Deutsch. Uh, she asked me a while back if she could send me something and it turned out to be this gorgeous mug that she got at her local farmer's market. I could totally be on QVC couldn't I the way I gesture to it and she also sent me a yummy chocolate bar. I got it like the morning that I left. And so I didn't have an opportunity to say anything, but thank you, Megan. That was really sweet. And she sent me a really nice note with it. Uh, thanking me for the podcast and, um, Seth will work and all of these things. And, and it meant a great deal. I was incredibly touched and, uh, I shall treasure it. Thank you. As soon as I saw it was a coffee cup. I was like, yeah. Oh, if you're on video, you can see Jackson slurking behind me. He's out here. Uh, we've been having rain while I was gone. The monsoons came in, which is subject for rejoicing. Um, so great. Uh, free water falling from the sky. It is, um, truly a miraculous thing. I know I use the metaphor all the time in my books about drought and like water in the desert. And there's a reason for this people. Every once in a while I think maybe I shouldn't use this yet again. And then it's like, but it's the perfect metaphor. So, um, last week I went on a writing retreat. I went on Tuesday and left very early. I did have travel shenanigans. Um, I think this is just going to be our lives for the near future that there's just going to be airline travel shenanigans. They are desperately trying to make back their money, uh, from pandemic. They don't have enough people. <laughs> They're charging extortionate prices and giving shitty service. So yay. <laughs> But I went on this writing retreat. Um, I finally did find out for those of you who, who listen regularly that, um, that the person hosting it preferred not to have their name connected to it yet because they're still putting things together. This was, um, a little bit of a test. They're considering hosting ongoing writing retreats and had invited me and a few other people to, um, kind of come be the guinea pigs and see, you know, kind of kick the tires, that kind of thing. I have to keep an eye on Jackson. Um, and you, you guys, it was, it was fabulous. It was so wonderful. Um, in fact, that reminds me, I meant to, they gave me an exit survey and I meant to reply and say, um, that I'm happy to give a testimonial anytime. I have to remember to do that. In fact, let me put that on my things to do list. I hope you guys don't mind. Test to Monial. Otherwise I forget to do these things. Um, so oops. So it was a beautiful location. I will post a picture of my writing spot. It was very different from my natural habitat in that it was, um, in a warm and humid place and with forest and I would sit and write at the verge of the forest in a, they called it a pergola. I always call this the grape arbor. They call it, but it was very much like this. Um, 
only their vine was not growing um, and I'm not sure why it was kind of fascinating because this land has been within the same family for a really long time over 100 years and I could see evidences of previous gardeners uh, a lot of the garden had been neglected for a very long time but it was um, really cool to see where the garden had been and sort of identify with this person who had gone before and spent all this time putting things into place and I had a uh, very strong desire to to work in that garden and reconstruct it. I remember when my mom married for the third time uh, my mom's been twice widowed and my when my stepdad died her second husband my first stepdad after he died and she remarried to my current stepdad stepdad Dave uh, Dave was like going through our house they ended up eventually selling that house in Denver and he was going through the house and you know like down in the basement through Leo my stepdad's workroom and he said made a really interesting comment that because he hadn't known Leo and he said that he felt like he had kind of come to be friends with him sort of seeing his projects and seeing how he had organized things and not organized things and that is how I feel about this probably in a more distant way but this uh, unknown gardener I felt like I could see the traces of I'm I'm gonna I, I guess there see the I, although I was picturing a woman um, that I could see the traces of her design and her aesthetic and I found some there were some plants amidst the overgrowth you know that were still struggling on and I could picture her planting those things and seeing how it looked when it was all in life. So I think that's going to turn up in the new book. I did start the new book um, and I believe it is the working title which I believe will be the sticking title is shadow wizard dun, dun, dun. Um, and I'll set up a pre-order for it soon because it, it's going to be September you guys it's going to come out in September but it started and I'm happy with that title shadow wizard. Thanks for all of you who sent suggestions uh, greatly appreciate it. I think that this trilogy title is going to be renegades of magic. It's what I'm playing with. So so yeah um, the retreat it was very laid back it was unstructured uh, my friend who is organizing and hosting it um, did offer a conversation writing conversation but not necessarily direct teaching that sort of thing. I think that this would vary depending upon who decided to do it but I think that um, yeah it was just it was so relaxing and and you all know if you are a long time listener you know that I am more than a little um, I don't want to use the word compulsive <laughs> Jackson is really watching something over there and making sure he's not gonna go over the wall. I don't know what he's got his gaze on. Oh must have been a bird. All right so I am highly ritualized about how I get my work done right. So I said to my friend that I think I'm the only person who goes on a writing retreat and panics about not getting any writing down and my friend said no everybody feels that way everybody worries that they're not going to do it and I thought well it's not this exactly the same thing because for me I can feel reasonably confident that if I stay home I will get my work done and you know and I lost time and energy to travel right that Tuesday 
was was a wash. Um, I did do some shopping. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen that I did buy a couple things while I was stranded at the Dallas Fort Worth airport. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to talk about my travel shenanigans. So, and then Wednesday, I spent a lot of time just kind of getting my head back into the bonds of magic world. And then I did get writing done on Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday before I had to leave for the airport. So I've got, I'm about 5,000 words into the new book and, and I'm happy with it. One thing that I decided to do since I was on retreat was I thought, okay, well, this is an opportunity for me to mix things up a bit that I don't have to do, try to replicate my at home experience. In fact, I will not be able to replicate my at home experience. So I, I kind of just left it open. I let it be working on stuff as I felt like it. I let myself be a little bit more dreamy and less focused on getting the word count done. I didn't keep track of my hours and so forth. And it was definitely a much more relaxed approach. Um, there was a lot to be said for that kind of approach. What's going on? Okay. He's just up under the tree. Have to make sure he's not marauding the avian life. Cat wrangling. So, so yeah, now I'm, I am kind of wondering if I should mix up my process a little bit and I don't know. Something to keep in mind anyway, or maybe it was just good for me to do that every once in a while. I really loved, uh, just being out of my routine. I loved being off on my own. They, it was great having someone who is a career author organize something like this because my friend was sensitive to just how writers are. And so for like breakfast and lunch, they, they did all of the food. They provided the food. They wanted it to be like, you know, that I could just have whatever, whenever I was ready. So they would just set out like, um, bowls with different kinds of fresh fruit, berries and that kind of thing. They had asked me ahead of time if I had food allergies or what I didn't, didn't like to eat. Uh, and then at lunchtime they had set out salad makings. So, you know, a big bowl of lettuce and then various other things that I could construct my own salad with. And so like when I, finished working on stuff. When I finished writing, I could just waltz in and, you know, find everything set out for me. And it was very princess like, and then they cooked dinner for me and provided conversation. And that was, um, it was all charming. I did get to ask my friend, uh, about this thing I've been pondering about going to multiple POVs, uh, with shadow wizard and, and she asked really good questions. Um, instead of offering advice, asked me a series of questions about why did I want to do it? And which is really a good way to do things. And after I finished talking about it, she pointed out that I had only one reason not to do it and a whole bunch of reasons for why I wanted to do it. And she used the phrase story brain, which I really like. Um, and would like to credit her with and will someday when I am given leave to say where I was and who I was with. But I found that really helpful because for some reason, and I, you know, this is all part of like figuring out what your process is and owning it. Right. Um, the terminology like muse inspiration, that kind of thing just doesn't work for me because I don't know. I don't like the idea that the muse is some sort of external deity that deigns to come or go. 
I think while I, my stories seem to come from somewhere that is not always within my conscious control, it also doesn't feel like this numinous thing that has its own mind and personality. Instead, whoops, have to stay back, get a little bit of sun breaking through the clouds. Monsoon. Uh, I like the idea of story brain because it does feel like a very particular part of my brain. Let's see where he went now. Oh, there he is. Okay. You guys might be able to see him on video. He's right under the tree, but he's also in with the flowers. Yeah. So that that's really how this feels is that this is my story brain really wants to do this thing. And so I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm excited and it, I feel, um, relieved maybe in a sense and energized to have permission. I'm putting that in air quotes to, to do this. So that was a great outcome. Um, and yeah, it was just, uh, it was basically a vacation where I got to still talk writing stuff and get some writing work done. And, and that was fabulous. It was great. So I've got about 5,000 words so far on shadow wizard. Start ramping up into that. Um, Thank you all for the lovely comments on <clears throat> storm princess and the Raven King. It's a, um, out, it got to be in the like top five recommended indie books on Barnes and Noble. That was kind of cool, huh? So I'll share that on social media today that came while I was gone. I didn't look at email the whole time I was there. That was one thing where they offered me the Wi-Fi password and I just never asked for it until like the day before I left when it occurred to me that I didn't know anything about my plane flight and maybe I should look, <laughs> but otherwise I didn't look at email and that was, um, wonderfully relaxing and good. So, um, yep. Storm princess is out. Thank you all for the ratings and reviews, kind comments really happy that you all love it, that it satisfied expectations and did the cover reveal on the covenant of thorns books. I will be sharing those through the coming week and those will be releasing through the summer. The pre-order is up. I'll add that to the show notes. I ended up for those of you who've been following for a while, I did not delete that scene that I was considering deleting. Um, I think I did the work on this on Monday. So I, yeah. Oh, that's right. I didn't do a podcast Tuesday. So I ultimately decided not to take it out. I did change a couple of things. I changed a line about rape that I decided was way too flip for, um, today's sensitivities, a change of 10 years. Yeah. But I read through that scene. And it was a, not as bad as I remembered it. The same thing that Corrine found when she went through and, and read it, that it was not as long, not as terrible, not as sexual as she had remembered it. So again, I do think this is a migration of what is shocking to us over time. It was no longer as much as I thought it was. And also if I had taken it out, it would have required a lot of work to the book and I decided to leave it. So that was an interesting discovery. So pre-orders are up for those books and thank you all for pre-ordering. I'm amused by how many people have pre-ordered the first one. Some people have pre-ordered all three. Um, but it's something like, um, I don't know, four times as many have, I have four times as many pre-orders for book one as for two and three, which totally fair. I mean, I would do that too. It's like, no, I want to read book one and see 
if I want the rest. So just interesting to see. Yeah. So, um, we've got July and August for those three books releasing and then shadow wizard out in September. I think, and I think book two will be wild familiar. We'll see. So that's all my excitement. Happy to be back in the saddle, refreshed, rejuvenated. Thank you again, Megan. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. You all take care. Bye bye.